Hey guys, Mike here at MS Tutorials and welcome back to a new video. All right, today we're going to do a subscriber request. This one is for Yasser and he specifically asked me to kind of uh, revisit a video that I did about a year ago on the basics of uh, texturing. Okay, so UV mapping and texturing, and it's kind of a pain in the butt, uh, but it has to be done. Uh, so it's pretty important. So I'm going to keep this very, very basic and very much entry level. So if you know about UV mapping and texturing, you can skip this one. If you are a beginner uh, or you have trouble with this topic, uh, you know, stick around, right? Okay, cool. So we're going to start with a polygon cube just to keep it easy. All right. Now, first thing you notice when you create an object, a polygon object in Maya, it already by default has a color. And in this case, it's gray. Now, what Maya does is it, it's a, it applies a default uh, shader uh, called a Lambert, and it's gray. Now, there's a difference between a shader and a texture or 2D texture file. Um, and the difference is this. And I like to explain it in a way that if you take this cube and you drop a bucket of gray paint on it, and it's going to hit everything, so to speak, you could consider that as a shader. If you want to apply a 2D texture file to the object, you are taking a sheet of paper with a pattern on it, and you're kind of gluing it to the cube. So you need scissors to cut it in the right places and glue it in the right scale so it's not warped and so forth. Uh, you know, it kind of sounds weird, but that's just how I like to explain it, okay? So right now we have a default shader, and I'll prove that to you. Uh, with the cube selected in my attribute editor, I'm going to move over and you can see that it has created a Lambert one and my color is gray. So if I wanted to change the color of that shader, I could select red or yellow and so forth. Okay. But that's not what we want to do. We want to apply a texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, assign a new material. I'm going to go with another default gray, La gray Lambert, like the one before. And in my attribute editor under Lambert, I'm going to select this checkered box next to color. And I'm going to type in file and I'm going to select the file because that's what I want to use. All right. I'm going to hit the folder. And I'm going to look for this wood texture. All right. Now you would kind of expect to see the wood on my object. Uh, well, actually, you need to go up to this little sphere, the black and white sphere. And once you hit that, you see that the material has been applied. All right. So has this been applied perfectly? Well, no, because it's not UV mapped. And you can see that, you know, this looks kind of okay and so on, but this doesn't line up and the scale is too big and so forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our object and we're going to UV map it. So with the object selected, we're going to go up to UV and we have to select a projection. You can do an automatic projection. You can do a cylindrical when you're working on a cylinder, a planar for flat surfaces, and a spherical for a sphere. In this case, we're going to go with automatic. All right. And already you see that the object changes. Now, funny thing is, these lines are not aligned, right? This is not aligned and so forth. However, a projection has been made. So let's go and see what that projection looks like. Okay. So in object mode, we're going to go up to UV and to our UV editor. And here you see a bunch of cubes or squares. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to go to shell because each one is a shell. And let's see if we can move these around. So I'm going to click on it, hit W. Yeah, I can. So what that tells me is that these are not connected. Okay. And every time I select one, for example, this guy, when I move it, you can see that the texture on top is moving as well. So that already tells me this is the top of my cube, which is good to know. All right. Now, if I want to have this wood flow with these um, kind of dark lines on it to flow correctly, then this should be aligned with that, right? And this should be quite different. So this guy and this guy, we're going to hook them up. What we're going to do is we're going to select this. 
we're going to right click and go to edge and we're going to look for the correct edge and when i select it here this turns red that one turns red as you can see but also over here it shows me which line should be connected to that so when i click on that this one turns green as well so i'm going to connect that to that so with that selected i'm going to go to polygons move and sew uv edges so now suddenly these two are connected because if i right click and go to shell there you go that automatically means that the texture on these two is perfectly aligned you know there's no other way so let's go around okay so these are not aligned okay so i'm going to right click and go to edge i'm going to click on that edge which tells me that it's the one down here so right click edge there we go and i want that to connect to that one so again move and so so if i right click and go to shell i now have three so i got the top the side the bottom and the one left that is not aligned as you can see is this one okay so i'm gonna find this edge right click edge right there that's the one at the bottom here so right click edge there and i can go up to move and sew or i can hit g on my keyboard to repeat the last command now this is interesting because now we have four pieces that are connected all right so that means that this one down here right click edge this one is not connected to that one and that makes sense because if this were a piece of paper and i would connect these two and i'll show you move and sew it looks very weird right so we're going to hit Control z to go back what that tells us is that you actually need a seam and where you put that seam is something you need to think about up front now in this case because the pattern is not really different it doesn't matter that much but in some cases depending on the pattern that you're using you have to really think about where you want to put that okay so let's say we have a situation like that where it doesn't line up what you can do is to decide to move where your uh, cutoff is so instead of having that at this end and at this end you could go in right click edge select that one and decide that you want to have your seam there and go up to cut uv edges so now if i right click and go to shell and hit w that is now my new shell and i want this to move over down here so i'm going to right click go to edge and you can see that this lines up with the top line there so move and sew okay so what about the other two cubes now looking at our pattern okay <clears throat> the most logical way and i'll just rotate this in the correct manner okay this line is flowing all the way around except for these two sides okay so this will never line up because if this were a wooden crate you would have either alignment with this side as it does now or it would be rotated over and i'll just show you this guy if i hit rotate it's going to do that if i want to be diagonal like that i can do that as well so we'll just click on that again so you kind of need to decide do you want to have it to flow in that direction or in that direction and again depending on the texture that you're using all right now we're not quite there yet so let's say we decide that we want to connect them all right so i'm going to right click at the edge and let's see this one apparently connects to that one so move and so and the same would be here hit g to repeat last command so now it's one big shell and now we have this pattern like i just explained from this end it looks okay from that end it's not aligned all right cool so are we done no not quite because we have a zero to one space which is from this top here down over the green line over the red line and the blue line this quadrant the right top quadrant needs to contain all your information or your shell if you will so i'm going to take that shell and move that up here 
and I want it to fit exactly into that square. Now I can hit R and scale it and move it and so forth. And as I do that, you can see that my pattern is changing in my cube. I can also go up to uh, the polygons and then click on layout. And what layout does is it takes all the projections that you might have, and that can be more than one, and it will automatically fit them in that space for you. Okay? So that's our cube. All right? And actually, that's all there's to it. Uh, one more element that I will show you, uh, which can happen on occasion. We'll go back to our UV editor. Let's say something is warped. Okay, so I'm going to right click and go to vertex. Okay, and I'm going to take that vertex and hit W and I'm just going to move that out. Now, as you can see down here, that's creating a problem. And I got more than one, as you can see, right? I got that one, that one, and that one. And the reason for that is that that is where these three vertices come together. Okay. So let's say I did a projection and for some reason it looks like this. Okay. I can take those vertices and I can just manually move them until they are aligned again. Let's try and keep that clean. There we go. Okay. So this is the basic approach for how to UV and apply textures. And hopefully that will uh, help you get started with uh, texturing your objects. Okay. So that said, uh, thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Bye.